Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today is going to be the inaugural demo video. Uh, in the past, the videos I've done have been called unboxing videos. Um, and uh, as the name suggests, that's when I just take a bit of equipment out of the box. And in the past, I haven't really distinguished between taking something out of the box and doing a demo of it. Um, those have kind of basically sort of been the same thing and I just called them an unboxing. But recently I did the unboxing for my new Fluke 17B Plus Multimeter and the unboxing was fine but the demo was pretty light on. I didn't really uh, show you all of the features that are available on the multimeter. Um, so I thought I might um, try and do a better job of that and do a dedicated demo of the Fluke 17B Plus Multimeter. And I've created a new category of videos for the show called Demos, and this will be the first one. Uh, I'll do more demos in the future, um, and I'll separate the uh, unboxing and the demo, um, and, and sort of ta uh, take a different approach to each of those tasks. Um, so I'm going to throw you over the bench and we're just going to run through um, all of the features that are available on my Fluke Multimeter um, so that you can see uh, what's available and, and how to use it. Here we are on the bench. So uh, this is the Fluke 17B Plus Digital Multimeter that we'll be taking a look at today. Um, these are the stock probes that came with the, um, with the, uh, the meter. You can see that uh, they've got insulation on the uh, probes. This is to reduce the surface area on the top uh, to reduce arcing when you're working with high power. Uh, we won't be working with high power. Um, so we can take off uh, these uh, shields and just make the probes a little bit more accessible. Um, what we'll be doing today is we'll oh sorry I should mention this is the um, the K type probe this is used as a thermometer uh, it plugs in here in place of the probes when you want to measure temperature which is something that we'll be doing later on now uh, as you can see most of the functionality of this meter is laid out for you uh, on this dial here it shows you what's available uh, just to run you through the features we've got um, alternating voltage alternating current uh, voltage uh, direct current voltage uh, and then we've got uh, millivolts for AC and DC both of them we can measure resistance diodes and continuity we can do capacitance testing we can test current a uh, high current for AC and DC um, we can choose re measure current in the milliamps range for AC and DC and um, we can measure current in the microamps range for AC and DC and finally we can measure temperature with the thermometer and the K-type probe. Um, we'll be going through each of those features in order. I found some documentation available uh, from Fluke um, that showed you uh, wiring diagrams for um, uh, for using each of these features so we'll be going through that documentation today let me just flip you over to the first test you can see here this is the fluke uh, 17b plus fuse test um, and it shows you the pinout on the left for testing the high current and the pinout on the right for testing the the low current you see here on the left you uh you you plug the um the the uh you basically short out the the positive line and the uh amp uh, amp line. Uh, actually, before we talk about that, let's just talk about the uh, the the um, uh, the meter leads on the front here. Now, most of the functionality that you'll use on the meter uses these two rightmost probes. This black one is called common, and you can think of it as the negative side. Uh, and this one's just um, I'm not sure what it's called. It's just called positive, I guess. But it's the one that you use for uh, most of the functionality, including voltage, temperature, resistance, uh, diode, continuity, and uh, 
capacitance. So most of the functionality is available on this uh, line. This is not fused because it doesn't need to be fused because it doesn't actually, uh, it, 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 uh, the, it actually presents something like 10 mega ohms across here. It's very high resistance. So no, no appreciable current will flow. So it doesn't need to be fused. These on the other side are fused and there's two of them. The high power one um, can measure up to 10 amps fused. If you exceed 10 amps here, the fuse will blow. Uh, for the milliamps and the microamps, the fuse is only rated to 400 milliamps. If you exceed 400 milliamps, the fuse will blow. Now we don't want to blow our fuses because it's inconvenient. If you blow the fuse, you have to take the thing apart, pop the back off, find the fuse, get a suitable replacement, put it back in. We don't want to have to do that. Um, I don't even know if I've got suitable fuses on hand. I might have to go and purchase some if I do that. So I want to avoid blowing the fuse uh, it just by being sensible about what we plug it into. You should be aware when you're using the current measuring facilities, it's essentially introducing a short circuit between the two probes. So when you're using these two probes, it's high impedance or high resistance around about 10 mega ohms, very high resistance. Across these two terminals, essentially no resistance, um, just a short circuit basically. So um, uh, yes, it's important that you understand you use these on the right for current, you use these for everything else. This is a short circuit, this is high impedance or high resistance, basically the same thing. Now, um, uh, let's flip you back over now. We're having discussed those ports. Uh, what we're looking at here is how to test the fuses. Now the fuses should basically give you continuity, um, but they actually show you here um, that if we put it into resistance mode, sorry, I'll, I'll uh, I'll talk you through the diagram, then I'll bring you back over to the desktop. So, um, on the left, you see that we're testing the current for the for the for the high uh, high power side, uh, and then on the right, we test the current for the low power side. Um, on the high current side, we expect to see a resistance of between 0, 0.0 ohms and 0, 0.10 ohms. If it, the resistance is in that range, then the fuse is considered to be okay. Similarly, uh, for the um, for the for the low power fuse, um, we expect to find a, a resistance in the range of 0 0.099 ohms, uh, anywhere up to, up to anywhere including one kilo ohms or 1.01 kilo ohms. Um, so that's a, a higher resistance expected on the low power line. So let's throw you over to the uh, bench and let's put our device into um, ohm range. You can see here it's. Uh, we'll just press that until we get to um, auto ranging resistance. That's what we've got there, auto ranging resistance. Actually, that's what we already had. There we go. Now, we're not going to need the black terminal for this. So let's just put it out of the way so that it's clear what we're doing. And what we're going to do, first of all, is short out um, the, the circuit between uh, the positive line and the uh, high powered current uh, line. So we'll put this uh, in there and you can see we're reading 0 0.1 ohms which is well right on spec. So it says it should between, uh, be between 0 and 0 0.1 and it is. So that's very good. Now let's continue and do the second part of the test which is testing the low power fuse. So we put the, uh, the probe in there and we're getting 8 kilo ohms which is above spec it shouldn't be so high still six eight kilo ohms wow okay well it says we should expect it only up to one kilo ohm so let's give it another try six kilo ohms eight kilo ohms again so it wants to give us that eight kilo ohms doesn't it now i had some problems earlier when i was preparing for this video where i found that there was a bit of resistance introduced by the cable maybe i'm not getting a really good um contact there i don't know it really wants to give me 8.2 doesn't it anyway let's uh let's take the actual probe out and let's replace it with um with a, a straight through banana plug that's what we've got here uh, let's put those in and just see what it does then still wants to give me eight point and so okay there we go so uh technically this thing is outside of the specs 
um, according to um, to uh, to fluke fluke said this should be no more than 1.01 kilo ohms we're getting very reliably 8.2 kilo ohms now I think as a practical matter it doesn't matter um, but uh, it is different to uh, it is different to what the what the spec said uh, 8.19, it's very reliably 8.19 using both of those uh, probes. So there you go. So a little bit out of spec there. Surprising, uh, surprising. Anyway, so uh, just throw you back over here quickly and that's what we've just finished doing is the fuse test. So the one on the left was well within spec. It was exactly what we expected to see. The one on the right was not within spec. We were getting eight kilo ohms where we should have got no more than one kilo ohms. So there you go. Now let's jump over to the next test. Uh, this is the voltage test. Uh, you see that you uh, put the um, you put the 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 red and the black um, uh, probes across the um, uh, the voltage source, um, uh, and uh, uh, and then you get your me measurements, and you sh and you see there that it's got uh, AC voltage, DC voltage, and then uh, it says millivolts for for DC. But I think that we can do millivolts for AC as well. So uh, let's throw you back over to the meter. Now the first thing we'll do is uh, AC voltage. That's the first thing to do. Now, I mean, the obvious AC voltage is uh, the mains power, isn't it? I mean, that's th that's the main thing. Um, but. Uh, I uh, don't want to do high voltage stuff. Now I've got this, which is a power adapter um, that uh, that that um, uh, inputs uh, um, 240 volts AC and outputs nine volts AC up to two amps. It can deliver at nine volts. So. Um, uh, 9 volts AC I'm, I'm a bit happier with. So I'm going to use this for a 9 volt AC source. Um, uh, I'm going to plug it into the, uh, the, the power adapter, which is up the back here. This is our power in. Um, I'm going to plug that in there. Um, and you see that the, the power comes out here into, um, into uh, this, this lead here, uh, which I'm going to run into... this power input box here so you see this is uh, the power coming out of the power line we're going to plug it in there so now we've got power across these two terminals um, what we'll do is we'll get our um, our positive and negative um, probes which are here uh, and we'll switch them out on our multimeter which is here so we're going to take out the black and the red um, we're not going to use the, the probes, we're going to use the banana cables so that we can be hands free, we won't need to use our hands. Um, so we'll put the banana plugs into the multimeter and then we'll um, uh, 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 put the, uh, the, uh, the probes across the input uh, power lines. Now there's no load on here, there's just the power coming out of the power line. We should be seeing 9 volts AC. At the moment can you read that? Yep, we're reading uh, 0 0.013 volts. So it's got a tiny little voltage coming through. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the power on over here. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. The mains power is on. Um, this is... Uh, says one volt interesting now we might want to put a load across this my programmable load which is over in the corner here um, only is only rated for DC um, so uh, what are we gonna do
Um, it's interesting that it says it's delivering one volt AC. I suppose I wasn't sure really what to expect. Uh, let's just put it over to. Um, first of all, I'm going to turn that off, and I'll just put it over to voltage DC, and let's uh, let's plug in our nine volt battery. Shall we do that? So we'll we'll take the um, the AC out. And we'll put this DC voltage in. Okay, so that's delivering um, nine volts DC, which is really what I was expecting to see. So I can't quite account for the fact that this um, AC source um, is not giving me nine volts as well. Clearly, the battery on DC it gives me nine volts. Um, if we put that onto uh, AC and we put in the, um, the um, transformer here uh, and we turn it on at the source and we're seeing 1.3 volts. Now this says that it will deliver um, 9 volts and it's not. And the other thing that's really quite uh, surprising is... Oh, there we go. Okay, so it says it's delivering 0 0.045 amps. So that's 45 milliamps. Um, th this thing that you can't see uh, is uh, is a is a meter, um, and I, I I'm sorry I can't show it to you because the the camera flashes when I show it to you. Um, but it gives me a reading and tells me uh, how much power. So this is actually drawing half a watt, even though it's not really doing anything at the moment. That's according to that, anyway. Um, so uh, I don't understand why we're only seeing one volt AC, but what I'm going to try doing is introducing a load um, and seeing if that affects the power that this delivers, because it doesn't seem to be delivering much power at the moment. So I will just turn that off at the wall again. Uh, this is where we can attach our load. Now... Um, I think I'm just going to need a little bit of Ohm's law here, uh, and before we do that, uh, sorry to keep you waiting. I was just finding my resistors. Now I've got these big honking things. These are 100 watt. 6 ohm resistors, okay? I've got two of them, so we could put them in parallel and get up to 12 ohms. Sorry, in series to get 12, 12 ohms. And in addition to those 100 watt uh, jobbies, I've got these, which are 5 watt, 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. Now, we don't want to... Uh, th this thing can deliver 2 amps at nine volts, um, but we don't we don't want to take a really high um, we don't want a really high uh, current load. We just want just something nice and safe. So um, let's uh, let's do our little um, uh, Ohm's law together. So uh, let me get my notebook <coughs> and. The date today is uh, today, and this is not necessarily the day the video will go out, but today is the 2nd of September 2024, and Ohm's law is V equals IR. Now, V equals 9. Uh, VAC and um, the resistor that we've got available R equals 4700 ohms so I equals V divided by R equals 9 divided by 4700 equals <clears throat> Let's get 
get the dust off that guy. All right. Nine divided by four seven zero zero equals uh, uh, zero point uh, zero zero one nine one amps, which is one point nine one milliamps. Now <clears throat> that probably isn't too much of a current draw. So I think we can safely uh, use our, um, our, uh, our 5 watt rated 4.7 ohm, 4.7 kilo ohm uh, resistors as long as we don't accidentally short out those terminals while we're using it. So we'll be careful about that. These can absorb up to 5 watts. We're only going to be giving it uh, I suppose we should check out the what what watts is of course different to um, to voltage. So uh, P equals uh, I V, right? Uh, so I is going to be that, and V is going to be that. So it equals uh, 0 0.00191 times nine equals. All right, so I hope we're only looking at, I hope I haven't got any of these numbers wrong, which is 17.23 uh, uh, milliwatts. So it's, it should only be using uh, about 20, watt, 20 milliwatts-ish. Uh, I hope I haven't made some sort of silly mistake there. Uh, with my basic calculations, but I, I think if these can do 5 watts and we're only going to be using about 20 milliwatts, everything should be pretty safe. So um, let's plug it in and see what happens. Now I'm going to need some. Uh, Uh, sorry, I'm just going to take a quick break. I'll be back. I'm back. Sorry, I had to go looking for this. This cable um, will do us for this job. It uh, banana leads on one end and uh, uh, alligator clips on the other end. So we're going to uh, we're going to use our power breakout box and we're going to break out the um, the the negative and the positive sides here. And we're just going to con connect those across the, uh, <coughs> the the resistor here. Now we want to be very careful that we don't accidentally short out these um, uh, these lines um, because uh, you know that'll blow something. I don't know what it'll blow, but it, it won't be good. So uh, let's just be careful there and make sure they're not going to uh, to short out. We don't want to short that out. All right, so what we're looking at now is um, the uh, AC, uh, um, we, we've got our, our AC connectors here into the multimeter, uh, and then we're running our load out and through this 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. So I'm just gonna throw the power on and interesting so where uh, we, we've got a load attached um, and it still says that it's delivering uh, 1.5 volts AC so that is certainly not what I was expecting to see I, I can't account for this reading I don't understand what's gone wrong um, this is very surprising I don't usually work with AC um, uh, technology uh, or power so um, I, I, I have to say I've never done an AC reading with a multimeter before this is not what I was expecting to see let me just turn the power off um, and when we turn it off we see the voltage drop from 1.5 volts back to around 0 0.1 volts which is what we were seeing earlier so this is quite surprising you can see that um, uh, this 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 device does say 
that it de delivers uh, 9 volts AC um, but we measured it and it was only delivering 1.5 volts AC and that was regardless of the fact if we had a load across it or not. Now I'm reluctant to put a, a much lower load across it because I don't want to draw too much current and uh, upset anything so it's uh, it's not quite. What I might do is just try um, this transformer without this um, uh, as part of the circuit there. So we'll put that in there and let's just power him back up. And again, it's about 1.5 volts AC. So I don't understand. I don't understand this at all. Uh, it, I was expecting to see 9 volts AC. I'm only seeing 1.4 volts AC. We've tried it with a load. We've tried it without a load. I thought it would work either way. Um, let's take that load out. It doesn't affect the reading. Uh, so, I mean, I think we can say this thing is only delivering 1.4 volts. Strange. I don't understand. Anyway, I'm going to turn that off again. Um, we might come back to AC uh, later on when we do our current measurements. Um, we'll see. Um, let's move on to voltage DC, which is something that, uh, that I'm, I'm more qualified <laughs> to, to work with. And of course, uh, we already saw that because we jumped ahead a little bit, didn't we? One thing I might do though, just before we leave here, um, I'll take out, um, uh, so take out these probes here and let's just measure that resistance and see that it actually is um, uh, 4.7k. 4 what are we looking at? Yep. 4.7k, right on spec there. Okay, great. So um, let's jump back over. Now we're gonna we're done with this. Let's take that out there. That was our AC power source, a nine volt it was supposed to be, but we're only reading 1.5 volts. So who really knows what's going on there? Perhaps it's a bad, bad transformer. I don't know. If you know. I'd be happy to hear from you. Why did we only get 1.5 volts when we read the AC voltage just now? I don't know. Now this is a 9 volt battery uh, and uh, we're just going to connect our, uh, our leads. So uh, obviously we could use the, uh, the probes but we're just going to use the banana uh, plugs and um, it's measuring uh, 9.4 volts DC uh, which is just what we'd expected. Um, we're, we're obviously still doing the, um, the voltage measurements and let me remind you that um, to do that we just, um, we just put the, the, the um, cables across the, the, the voltage source uh, as we've done here. So um, that's the same as it was previously. Uh, we've got it on voltage and, and there we go. Now um, I don't think I have millivolt source. Ah. So uh, I suppose we could make a voltage divider to test millivolts, couldn't we? Let me think about that. I'm going to go get a coffee and I'll be back. I'm back and I have my coffee, which is here. And I have my voltage divider, which is here. Now. Um, I should probably show you how this voltage divider is set up. So let me just uh, make some space for uh, for the notebook. So we'll just keep on from where we were earlier. Now we got uh, V in um, which comes down through here and down and through here and that's uh, ground and then we've got here um, is V out and this 
this is R1 and this is R2. Now, um, uh, V out equals uh, R2 divided by R1 plus R2 equals R times V in. Now for us, R1 is a variable 10k. So um, let's just say less than 10k. So it can go from 10k all the way down to zero basically. That's what our R1 is. And our R2 is 1k. I just picked a 1k uh, ohm resistor. So uh, yes, that's 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 what our network looks like. It's uh, uh, voltage in over here, uh, voltage out over here, ground connected over here, R2, 1k, R1, 10k, potentiometer it is actually. So um, let's uh, show you this circuit. So let's keep our multimeter in in uh, a focus over here. We've got it on voltage DC. Uh, we already did voltage DC. What we want to do is voltage millivolts. Um, so we might as well just flip it straight onto that setting now. That's not going to hurt. Now we've got our um, we've got our nine volt battery over here running into the power switch, which is off. This is the power switch. This is the battery. Now the power network comes in uh, to the top of this thing here and here. These leads run off to power the um, breadboard. That's uh, positive comes in here and negative comes in here from the power supply. Then we uh, put our potentiometer here between here and here. That's our 10k potentiometer, which at the moment is turned all the way down to zero. That's at zero. Uh, and then we run that um, uh, uh, out here and here for the uh, multimeter. So we connect, you see this uh, red uh, line here, that's our uh, voltage out, which runs into our fluke meter over here. And then this is the 1k uh, resistor here, which is a fixed re 1k resistance. This is the variable uh, 10k pot. Now it's turned all the way down to zero. So what we're going to do is throw on the power switch connecting uh, 9 volts to our circuit. Um, and you can see this is running at 1998 millivolts. Uh, 98 millivolts. Now as we increase uh, the resistance using our potentiometer, we should ex expect to see this voltage go up um, and eventually it'll go all the way up to 8 volts or so, which is well beyond the millivolt range. So we're measuring, using the DC millivolts, we're measuring 98 millivolts at the moment. I'm going to start turning the potentiometer up, increasing its resistance. Um, there we go. So the increased resistance changes the parameters of the, um, the voltage divider and more voltage becomes available um, at the at the V out terminal. So that's gone up to 120. And now I'm just going to start turning it a bit faster and it's, um, it's increasing the millivolts just past 200, uh, past 300, 400 and bang. As soon as it goes over 400 millivolts, it um, it it um, it signals uh, 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 OL, which is uh, short for overload. It's an overload, and you see that the overload light here has indicated that the voltage reading is too high. Now you can't, as I understand it, you can't hurt the meter by going overload. It'll just detect the overload. Uh, condition and report it to you, so you you won't damage the meter. We're not going to we're not run, taking any risks uh, by increasing uh, the the voltage here. If you increase the current when you're doing a current reading, you can blow the fuse. So when you're doing current, you've got to be careful that you don't 
deliver too much power but when you're just measuring voltage if you go over or out of spec it'll just let you know so um, now I don't have enough these are the, the actual proper voltage levels for AC and DC they can do up to like 600 volts I don't have a voltage source that high so we can't test the overload on on these two readings um, but we certainly can on the millivolts and this is what overload looks like we turn the resistance right up and bang it, it goes over 400 millivolts um, and then it's out of range Let's see how close to 400 we can get it. There we go. It will actually go just a tiny little bit above its tolerance. It, it's a, it's a, it's a. Um, I believe this is a 4,000 count bit of equipment. Let me just give me one second. I'll stop and I'll come back. I'm back. Sorry, I just wanted to confirm that this bit of equipment is what they call a 4,000 count bit of equipment, and indeed it is. Yeah, 4,000 count means that the um, the precision of the reading is four significant digits, so one, two, three, four, um, and and uh, basically uh, for this millivolt uh, reading that we're doing here. Um, uh, it's it, it's got um, 0.1 millivolts worth of precision and it can do up to 400 millivolts um, in an absolute value which gives you uh, between 1 and 4,000 counts of the minimum uh, thing there so yes this is a 4,000 count bit of equipment and um, and and so we would expect that the voltage uh, reading here could only go up to 400 millivolts and you see it can do just a tiny little bit over spec there but if we go much further it'll just go into uh into overload there we go for 438 we can push it as far as about 438 and then it just goes uh into overload so that concludes uh, our voltage uh, demos um, we've done. Uh, we did voltage AC, although we, could, we couldn't get a proper 9 volt reading. We only got a 1.5 volt reading, which was surprising. We, I don't understand why. The 9 volt uh, battery gave us a, a reading on the voltage range. We were happy to see. And we've made our uh, voltage divider network here and tested it between, uh, uh, what, what was it on the low end? about 100 millivolts on the low end through to um, uh, overload uh, of, um, of, of uh, 400 uh, millivolts. So we turn it up and we overload. Now, if you're curious, we can turn it back to voltage and we can find out what that actually is. So it's actually 780 millivolts. And if you're curious, um, the, the, the resistor uh, network that we've put together, which is called a voltage divider, can get us up to 8.1 volts. So that's uh, when we turn this up to the maximum resistance, um, we, we get the, um, the highest voltage output we can um, here. And this part of the network is uh, just one kilo ohms. So um, yes, that concludes voltage. The next thing that we'll be looking at is uh, resistance. So let me throw you, um, uh, back over to our uh, our thing. So we're finished with voltage and we're going to go on. Ah, uh, yes. Now we're doing current. Now current demands um, uh, different wiring. So uh, you can see here um, there's two options. You can do um, uh, uh, on the far left there is uh, high, high current and then on, on uh, in a bit on the right is uh, low current and you see you put this in series with the load and the uh, and the voltage source and a switch to turn it on and off um, and uh, there's a button uh, for AC interesting so I'm I'm not quite sure uh, what that means um, I might have to go and read the manual for this and come back. I, uh, I've been proceeding with the video and, and testing out bits and pieces uh, and I realized um, earlier when we were doing the AC voltage stuff and I couldn't get a proper reading on the, um, 
on the terminal. I think it was related to the uh, cables that I was using. Um, I seem to be having more luck now. So I've introduced a power switch between the uh, AC uh, adapter, which comes in here, and the circuit. And for some reason, it reads 1.4 volts um, when it's it's not turned on. And I can't quite account for that, but I want to show you when I throw this switch here, two things happen. First of all, it goes high voltage very quickly, um, and then um, quickly it reduces and um, and comes down to about 10 volts AC. Um, so I I I I. I think that this delivers like a surge of voltage uh, initially and then it settles in. So watch when I throw the switch, you see I saw 22 there, 22 volts on the reading and the, uh, the, the high voltage uh, or the over, um, overload um, went high. Uh, and then it settled down to about 10.7 volts AC, which is close to the spec. This thing is spec at 9 volts AC, so it seems to be delivering just a bit more voltage uh, than it says on the tin. Um, and it does seem to, when it when it initially, uh, uh, it sort of surges in. I suppose we could get the um, the oscilloscope um, to, to, to get a reading on that. Um, but, but but we won't. We'll just uh, see that basically, as you'd expect, when the uh, input voltage is a proper AC voltage, the, the Fluke uh, 17B plus digital meter um, can read it, as you'd expect. So the problem we had earlier seemed to be related to um, the cabling, and when the cabling's good, the, the, the meter is also good. So, um, yeah, that concludes this little extra bit about uh, volt, uh, AC voltage, and I'm going to go back and record the rest of the video now. Now, I just want to throw you over to the, um, uh, to the multimeter. Uh, let's see if I can find out how to do that like this. You see at the top there is the, uh, the multimeter. It's not running at the moment, but it was just picking up that, uh, that voltage. What I'm going to do is put it into single mode, and then I'm going to throw the power on here, and bang. So what you, what you see there is um, the power, the AC power coming on. Um, so uh, what I was interested in was that surge that we see um, uh, when we turn it on. So, um, uh, do you see, when we turn on the fluke meter, and I'll just put this back in running mode now, now that's just running, uh, and you can see that it's picked up a, um, a frequency of 50 hertz, that's the power line frequency, that's our AC frequency, 50 hertz coming through correctly um, and that wave that you can see that's the AC wave of the of the power that's coming in now um, uh, when we throw the power switch we we'll turn it off now when we turn it on watch what happens on the fluke meter here it goes up to 22 volts and the and the overload um, high, high voltage uh, overload uh, indicator uh, go flashes on watch flashes on and if you notice you see a reading of 22 volts AC up here now I can't account for that because when we put our um, meter in single mode we'll turn it off with the meter in single mode we'll throw the switch and bang you see the meter is not detecting any voltage as high as 22 volts so I really don't understand why the meter is picking that up the the um the the, uh, the the scope shows very clearly. Now, uh, can I put on the um, uh, uh, I think what what I want to figure out is how to show the scale. So it might be display uh, show scale on. There we go. Wonderful. Now, let's just do it one more time. We'll turn this guy off. We'll put him into single mode. We'll throw the switch and bang. So you see uh, the, um, the, uh, the voltage goes as high as 15 volts. Now, this is rated uh, at uh, 10 volts. That, that's a RMS reading, I believe. I don't know if this is true RMS or not. 
I suspect not, um, but either way, given that our input signal should be sinusoidal, uh, I believe that that shouldn't matter very much. Um, but as you can see, um, the, the reading um, doesn't go higher than 15 volts. So I can't account for the 22 volts that we see when we throw the power on. Um, now I'm just going to put this back into run mode. So it's just picking up the constant uh, volts. We turn the power off, goes back down to zero flat lines there. Um, and now we'll just do it one more time. You'll see this go up to 22 volts, 22, settles down at 10.7. The thing flashes on, but the scope shows that it's just a standard um, uh, AC uh, signal. So uh, anyway, I thought I'd show you that. Um, just a little bit more of the AC uh, uh, sort of uh, confounding uh, behavior. So uh, anyway, that does it for AC. I'm going to continue on with the rest of the uh, things now. Look, I'm back again, um, and I'm, I'm doing even more about this AC um, voltage. What I want to show you <coughs> is if we, if we turn this off and we press min max, then it says that it's going to get the maximum reading. So let's throw the switch and the maximum reading is an overload. Ah, fascinating. And if we press Okay. So that's uh I that's quite baffling. I I don't understand that at all. So uh <sighs> Let's uh, turn it off, put it into maximum mode, turn it on, bang, overload, high voltage. This is on AC. How on earth could we overload AC? It can go up to 6,600 volts. So it can't possibly, it can't possibly have have gone over 600 volts. I just don't understand. And if we watch it on the scope, let's just put the scope back into uh, single mode. We'll turn it off. We'll leave it on. Well, let's, we'll put it back on to maximum. I will clear it and we'll put it on maximum. And uh, we'll put this on single. And we'll throw the power on, and yeah, it's uh, it's just remarkable. This thing gets overloaded. I I, I just can't account for the behaviour that that reading it. The oscilloscope shows that it doesn't happen, so I don't understand why this thinks that it does. If anyone has any remarks about why I'm seeing this, I'd very much like to understand why. Um, but I, I can't do anything more about it now, so we'll go on with the next uh, recording the next parts of, the, of this video. Before we move on uh, to do the, um, the current testing, I realized I didn't show you um, on the millivolts testing um, that you can do either AC or DC. So what I've done here is I've put it in millivolts range and I've pressed the yellow button to measure AC millivolts and we've actually got this running into the um, to the uh, the 9 volt AC transformer which we've been using uh, to do our other AC voltage tests and it's switched off now when I switch it on it goes overload which is quite understandable it exceeded the 400 millivolts um, because it's providing 9 or 10 volts AC but when we turn it off then we can detect a pretty constant 40 to 50 millivolts on the line. So technically it's off, but we can detect 46 millivolts actually on the thing. I wonder if we turn it off completely uh, at the wall, we should see that fall back down to about uh, to zero, I reckon. I don't know why it's still got 41 millivolts on it. I wonder if we used our resistor, uh, if we could um, 
short out any uh, any capacitance or anything that's in there. Um, it's switched off. It's switched off. So introducing a, a 4.7k ohm resistance across the lines shouldn't do any like explosive damage. Okay, and that uh, that resistance has been applied and we remove it. I can't account for the 40, uh, 40 millivolts that we're seeing here at the moment. I don't understand why it's saying 40 millivolts when there is no power being applied. This is attached to the transformer. The transformer is off at the wall. So maybe some, uh, some voltage is being inducted into the transformer coils or something. I really don't know how 40 millivolts is present uh, presently. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why we're looking at that. Um, I could take the... Uh, that has affected it. That has affected it. Okay, well that's weird because this is just plugged into the um, the scope. Let's take that out. Okay. And let's see what happens if we uh, if we plug that back in there. It went on. It. I. I don't understand. Oh wow. When we. Uh, When we disconnect the uh, the 10 mega ohm uh, resistance that we have uh, across the meter, this is crazy. This is hundreds of millivolts. How can there possibly be hundreds of millivolts if we introduce a uh, a resistance across there? Then it drops down to 0.4 millivolts. I just I, I, I can't account for this. I don't understand how we could possibly have several hundred millivolts. What happens if we just completely unplug that? That's weird. How can there be 60 millivolts coming from these cables? And when I shake them, it changes. I don't understand. I don't understand. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep on keeping on. I'm I'm going to go and do the uh, the DC measurements now. DC, uh, sorry, current measurements. All right, so uh, we're going to continue now, and we're going to be doing our um, our uh, current measurements now. Just to remind you. This is the, the current uh, schematic from, uh, from Fluke. Um, as you can see, uh, you, can, you can change to AC mode. Uh, the, uh, the, the schematic is a bit confusing. It, uh, the button uh, that you press is, is not uh, the button over, over here. This is the backlight button. It turns the backlight on or off. Uh, the button that you, you use to, um, to convert to AC, uh, uh, as shown uh, on the top left there, is actually the button on the top right, this yellow button here. That's the one that will select uh, the appropriate um, uh, AC or DC uh, for, the, for the current measurements. Now, um, again, if we look at the schematic, uh, it's the two uh, probes on the left uh, that we'll be using. Um, and uh, we can measure amps, milliamps, and microamps. So um, let's uh, let's start with the um, with the amps measurement. So let's get prepared to do that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to uh, intercept our current source, which is going to be our nine volt uh, battery. What have we done with that? Should be floating around here somewhere. Why can't I see it? Here it is. Now um, we're going to send the the battery in that way through the uh, switch here, 
into here. Now uh, we're going to need some sort of a load. <coughs> um, uh, let's uh, let's put this on on amps. Now. Um, we're just going to put the black one over here uh, we're going to start with measuring amps and then we'll, we'll get it low 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 and then we'll, we've got to make sure we don't exceed 400 milliamps uh, when we're doing the other test because we'll blow the fuse and we don't want to blow our fuse um, but it's unlikely uh, to blow a well it's not possible to blow the fuse with the uh, with the 9 volt battery it won't be able to deliver that much power so um, let's use this to intercept the uh, the power and then we'll use uh, a spare jumper to complete uh, the circuit here now we need to attach a load here uh, how are we going to do that uh, we need something that turns that into jumpers uh, let me go looking I'll be back in a sec uh, yes okay I uh, I realize now uh, I have a programmable load um, uh, that that comes here uh, and we can attach that here as a load. It can only do uh, DC loads. It's not set up, I believe. I don't know. I don't know that it supports AC loads. I think it just does DC loads. Um, now it's switched on, um, and I want to show you. Um, uh, what am I trying to do here? Uh, three over there. Okay, this is the desktop, and we're going to run a program. Uh, which program do we want to run? Is it EB Tester? It might be. Let's open it. No, didn't like that. All right. I forget what the name of this program is. I was expecting to see it. Ah. I'll uh, I'll take a break. I'll come back and I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm back and I figured out what the problem is. I I, I need to connect to a different computer. I've remote desktoped into Wonder over here. Uh, Wonder's the computer that has the. Uh, the, um, the 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 software installed. So it was actually the EB tester. That's the correct software. Uh, it's just that uh, it's running on a different computer. So uh, COM6, I believe, is correct. So let's connect to COM6, and then we get to choose um, the uh, the the current uh, uh, mode. So. Um, <coughs> Uh, we're going to uh, set the um, the test amperage. Uh, let's say, I wonder how small we can do it. How about 0 0.01? Will it do that? I'm not sure. Value out of range. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the range that it supports is. Uh, what about... Uh, 0 0.1. Will it do that? No. Seems like 0 0.2. So that's 200 milliamps. Um, and the cutoff voltage um, is, let's make that uh, 10 volts, shall we? What, uh, we'll be connecting a 9 volt battery So and trying to draw 200 milliamps. Um, so let's just click monitor. Now it should be zero. There it is, zero. The red, the red reading down here at zero, and the scale's going up to uh, 0.5 volts. So I uh, wonder if we can zoom in or out on that. I don't know. 
or maybe that scale will automatically. Uh, anyway, let's. Um, uh, I'll just. Uh, I'll throw you over uh, to the um, <clears throat> to the bench just quickly. We'll go back to the software in a second. Uh, but I wanted to show you this is the uh, the the uh, load and this is the the power. So we're going to connect that there and. Um, uh, as you can see, nothing's happened. So we're gonna um, we're gonna throw this switch here. Uh, but before we do, we'll put you back over onto the computer so that you can see the software and the load on the software. So we're gonna throw the switch now, and I'm expecting to see. I'm expecting to see some sort of a current being applied. So I'm not sure what the problem is there. All right. Huh. Let's check our wiring and such. Oh, there we go. It's, uh, it's picking up. No, nope, it doesn't seem to be picking up much. Let me throw that switch again. No. Oh, perhaps I need to... Perhaps I just need to press start. Let's try that. Start. What about if I press on? bit of a mystery. I'm going to take a break, see if I can figure this out. I'm back. Let me just throw you back over to the, uh, to the bench here. Now, look, I, 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 uh, I've just, I've just shorted out the, um, the, the the 10 amp fused circuit while I'm in resistance mode and we are measuring 0 to 0.1 ohms which is what we measured earlier um, I was just concerned maybe that I'd blown the fuse here because I'm seeing things I don't quite understand let me show you if we put it here onto uh, DC uh, current mode um, and uh, and l let me just show you um, uh, what do I want to show? I'll, I'll, I'll put you back over to the software. All right, here we are in the software, and you can see we're reading uh, zero volts across the bottom down there. Now, what I'm going to do is um, plug the uh, <coughs> the um, the nine volt battery directly into the load. So I've done that now, and bang! You see, I've shot up to. Uh, about nine and a half volts, which is what we'd expect. So the, there is no problem with the electronic programmable load. That's working correctly. Uh, you see, when we attach the nine volts uh, directly, you get that blue line. Now, let me just show you. This is the direct connection here. This is the nine volts uh, 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 DC battery straight into the load. Now, if we take that out, we disconnect the load. Now, if we put this here, and then we input, um, Just I just want to show you that we've got uh, black uh, completing the circuit there, and we've got red completing the circuit here, and we're going to put the, uh, the 9 volts DC into this side of our breakout board. Now the uh, red's connected to red and black is connected to black, so that's all going straight through, and I can show you again on the software that we're still reading up around uh, 9.5 volts on the top end there. So that's all working as you'd expect. Now the thing that, that's uh, uh, worrying or strange um, is we've got our, uh, our meter in uh, current mode. It's in uh, DC current mode. Now let's take our breakout power and we'll take uh, the positive lead out here and put it in there. 
and we'll take the negative lead out here and put it in here and we should be seeing uh, some current and we should be seeing a completed circuit but if we go back over to our software you'll see that it's reading uh, zero, 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 zero down the bottom here. Uh, there is no, um, no current flowing. So when we measured the resistance of the, uh, of the current um, circuit, the fuse was correctly uh, installed. So I, I just, I, I, I can't account for this. I don't understand why we wouldn't be seeing a current through here. I don't think it's a dodgy connection. If we, if we take these, take them out of here and join them together there, bang, it's uh, I, I, I'll show you that the, um, the, the uh, software here, it's gone back up blue. You can see it up the top top right hand corner of that screen. Now if I take the, uh, the thing apart then it'll fall down. You see it's fallen down to the bottom, put it together and bang it goes back up to the top. So uh, how, how can this be? How can this be? I don't understand. I'm going to take a break, come back. Well dear me, you can't take me anywhere. I finally figured out what's wrong with this thing. Uh, user error. I'm afraid to say. Let me just show you uh, again uh, the uh, uh, the schematic that we're dealing with here. Now uh, the um, the the diagram says to use this socket and these two sockets uh, but I don't think that's correct um, let's take this apart um, and let, let me let me throw you back over to the uh, to the bench now if we put common in there and power in there then it works. Um, now, can you see uh, the mistake that I made was that I had this terminal in here. Uh, and that is, of course, why it wasn't working. But you can see, uh, if I throw you back over to the schematic, that it's not correctly labeled. Um, uh, so this particular picture that I'm looking at obviously isn't for the Fluke 17B+. Plus. We can tell that uh, now and it makes sense. First of all, that AC button that you're looking at there on the left, that doesn't exist on my meter. There, uh, th th there is a button there, but it's the power, it's the button for the backlight. You see, I can turn the backlight on and off. Um, the actual button for AC or DC is this yellow one over here. So uh, that's uh, misleading on this diagram. And then if you look at the bottom, you'll see that the that the common lead on on this thing is indicated on the right whereas if we look over here the correct wiring for me is to have the black one in common and then the red one in the 10 amp uh, uh, area here um, so I don't know why it doesn't say uh, more it might be trying to draw um, more current than it actually can so are we going to be brave and uh, <coughs> and take this down to uh, I, I'm not sure how much uh, how much current is being uh, used. Let's uh, let's be brave and let's plug this in uh, to the milliamps. Uh, uh, so let's just unplug it to start with, and we'll put it on the milliamps. And then let's plug it in here, and hopefully we're not about to blow a fuse. Are we going to blow a fuse? Hope not. Oh, good. So it's uh, it's only drawing uh, 0.05 milliamps. 
and that explains why we didn't see anything on the uh, on the other um, uh, scale because it's just not big enough and this should actually be safe for us it should be 50 microamps so over we go uh, and we've got the polarity wrong so um, let's uh, reverse the polarity um, here so that uh, the correct positive value comes through and we're, we're drawing from this battery we're drawing 67 microamps uh, which is 0 0.06 milliamps there you go so um, uh, I think I'm going to just uh, I'm going to phone it in for the rest of these. I'm not going to do uh, a, a, a high uh, current DC, and I'm not going to do any um, AC. Ah, uh, okay. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's uh, let's just unplug him, and uh, and we'll we'll put him in uh, a, 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 a high current and we'll put it into AC mode now we're going to take away this DC power that we've been using with the battery I'm going to put this in here I'm going to take this off, we're going to take off our programmable load and what we're going to prepare to do is uh, we'll put our we'll put our switch in um, and we'll get ready to throw the, uh, the AC power on and we'll take uh, this end out and we want to basically connect this so I get that out of the way this is our 4.7 um, kilo ohm resistor. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, send our uh, AC uh, AC 9 volts into this. So um, let's plug that in there. All right. Now I did a back of the envelope earlier about the power draw for that, and it's about 191 milliamps according to my back of the envelope so uh, it's not uh, shorted there that's all plugged in so I'm going to throw the power on let's put the backlight on for that guy all right so um, let's throw this power switch okay it's drawing so little uh, current that we uh, that we're not getting a reading I'm reluctant to use my my good meter uh, and blow the fuse. Um, what am I expecting? I'm expecting uh, 191 milliamps. So I, I can't imagine that'll blow a fuse. So let, let's give it a go. Um, we'll take it out of here. We'll put it onto there. We'll put it into AC mode. We'll put it in there. We'll throw the switch. it's hard to say um, shall we go down I suppose we should um, I'm not sure even which one is on um, let's put it down to microamps put it back into AC mode throw the switch doesn't seem to make any difference does it I'm not real confident about this wiring I have to say anyway I, I've uh, I, I, I've 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 lost my interest in this DC measurement, um, AC measurement. So we did uh, a good bona fide uh, DC current measurement. You can do AC current measurements. Um, I'm just a little bit paranoid about uh, about doing something I don't understand and blowing my fuses. So, uh, and also I don't want to do something that draws a lot of current because it, you know, it's uh, you know a short circuit will draw a lot of current. Uh, and that's not something that I want to risk sort of doing at the moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, s sign off on that one, um, and I'm gonna uh, move us over 
to the uh, to to the next uh, demo. So the next thing coming up, continuity. Let's go do continuity together. So uh, <coughs> um, before we discuss that, let's just uh, clear this away. We'll turn him off. Now um, we won't need most of this apparatus for what we're doing now. So let's just clear that out of the way um, right that there all right so we've got um, our uh, test leads we're gonna need the, those again so let's uh, let's put them back in here. And continuity, of course, is the the simplest simplest thing. So we'll put him into uh, into this mode now. Just again to show you, uh, we're going to be connecting uh, the positive and the negative terminals uh, directly. Um, <coughs> so uh, yeah, um, it it will beep. Uh, when it's uh, when it's closed and it and it won't beep when it's not so we need to press that uh, to bring it into uh, continuity mode which is what we've done there and when we short the leads it beeps and it gives us a, a measurement in ohms and uh, it seems to be pretty quick pretty quick I can actually tap it so quickly that it, it doesn't go off, but it does go off pretty quickly, pretty quickly. But it's not, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So that's uh, that's everything there is to know about continuity. It'll give you, um, it'll say over overload, or it can also be interpreted as open line. Um, it is, it's the same thing uh, when it's a resistance measurement. If it's an open line or it's an overload, it's the same thing. Um, so, uh, if you give it a good hard press, the uh, the resistance come in, comes into less than one ohm. There you go. So uh, let's keep on keeping on. What's uh, what's our next um, uh, three over there? Oh, all right. So uh, that was continuity, and next is the diode test. Okay, so um, uh, there's there's three there's three there obviously or four in fact. Okay, so um, let's get a diode to test with. Give me one second. Okay, this is a um, this is a, a one n. Uh, is it four? One n four zero zero seven. Anyway, it's a pretty stock uh, rectifying diode. Um, I might use my um, clips. These are these are my probes, but I have some. Uh, Some alligator clips, which are just a little bit uh, easier to work with. So um, let me throw you over here. We're going to put uh, our alligator clip uh, banana plugs in. Now we're on our continuity mode, so we need to keep pressing the button. Now we're in diode mode. All right, and we've connected them together. And we're getting a reading of 0.555. Now that is a, I, I believe they call it a Ford, uh, Ford bias or a, uh, yeah, Ford bias. So that's the amount of um, voltage that's lost across the, uh, 
across the diode. Now if we put it in reverse bias, um, we should see um, open line as we do. There we go. Um, and then uh, if you saw open line when it was in forward bias, that would have been the equivalent of a dead diode. But it's not a dead diode, so everything's working as it should. Um, <clears throat> and again, if it was in reverse bias mode and, we, and it wasn't open line, that would indicate a shorted uh, diode. But it's open line, so this diode is functioning correctly, which is what we would have expected. So. Uh, up next is what, uh, well, we'll see. I'll be back in just a second. All right, so uh, our next test is resistance. All right, so uh, the way to do the resistance, of course, is just to connect across the resistor. So I'll throw it back over to the bench here. Now we've got a bunch of resistors, so let's just try these ones, huh? Now this is a six ohm, 100 watt resistor. So let's connect our probes and we're measure, oh dear me, have I, I've still got it in diode mode. So uh, let's put it in ohms mode and it's reading seven ohms. So uh, there we go, just a little bit out of spec there. It could be the meter, it could be the diode, who knows? Try and get the, could, could be a contributing factor, could be the alligator leads as well that could be affecting the measurement. But it's pretty close, so that's about what we're expecting. And let's try uh, getting a reading on this 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. And we're looking at 4.7, it's come in, it's got it exactly right. Isn't it funny how it takes a little while to calibrate and get a reading? But yeah, that's it. So uh, that's resistance mode, doing a resistor, very good. Um, if, we, uh, if we just short circuit the, uh, the alligator clips, uh, there we go. So we've got about 1.8 ohms or 1.7 ohms. It's coming down, look at that, it's coming down, down, down. Maybe the, maybe the cable's warming up or something. But it looks like we've got about 1.4 ohms in our cables which would uh, explain why when we measure our, um, uh, our 6 ohm resistor, we're actually seeing uh, an extra 1.4, perfect. So we've got the 6 ohms from the resistor and the 1.4 ohms from the cable for a total of 7.4 ohms exactly. So that's, uh, that's quite inspiring. Uh, that inspires great confidence that this fluke meter is actually doing a good job. That, that seemed to get that absolutely 100% bang on, didn't it? So uh, let's jump back over to, um, to the desktop and we'll go to the next slide. Capacitance, all right. So uh, let's throw it over to the bench. Now we're just gonna need some capacitors. Uh, might put the resistors away. I think we're done with the resistors. Now I'm not sure what the minimum uh, res uh, capacitance that the, the thing can do is. Give me a second, I'll go and look that up. I'm back. Now I just uh, went and had a look at the data sheet for the meter um, and apparently it can do as low as 0 0.01 nanofarads, which is the same as saying 10 picofarads. So I, I got some picofarad capacitors here so let's put it in capacitance mode. Now there'll be all sorts of capacitance on this lead. So it'll just be interesting to see what we get. Now it's in auto ranging mode. So let's just connect our, 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 our 10 puff uh, ceramic and just see what it says. It says 10 nanofarads, which is exactly correct. Now it says 11 nanofarads, which is just off a little bit. But uh, I'll take that. Will you take that? I'll take that. That's pretty good reading. The capacitors are just cheaper capacitors anyway, so that it might actually be exactly correct. Who knows? Now here's some uh, 100 uh, puff uh, ceramics, 
So let's try him. Connect that on there. And we want to see a reading of, of 100 picofarads. Let's try and get that on. There we go. All right, what are we looking at? We're looking at 350 picofarads, where we're really expecting 100 picofarads. So, uh, yeah, this cap is, is out of spec, I reckon. So we're looking at 300 uh, picofarads. It's supposed to be 100. Uh, let's pick one of the ones out of the uh, out of the bag. Look here. That looks like a higher quality kind of a cap, wouldn't you say? Let's uh, let's snip this bag open um, and see if we can get a a, a, a capacitor that's uh, that actually is 100 picofarads. Who knows if this is a, is a high quality cap or not? It certainly seems a bit bigger than the other ones uh, in this box. So let's see. Take the leads here, one side and the other side. And we're looking at 220, 250, 300. So all of these 100 uh, picofarads are coming through as um, 300s. Well, well, all two of them that we've done. There we go. Let's do. Uh, let's do one more just for the sake of it. So, it's going to connect the uh, the leads. There we go. That's a lot closer. Oh no! It really wants to go up, doesn't it? Maybe there's some capacitance in the in the cables. I'm not sure. Anyway, all of our 100 picofarad uh, capacitors read up around 300 uh, picofarads. So there you go. Now let's have a look at an electrolytic capacitor. Um, it's a um, it's a uh, it's a one microfarad. This is uh, polarized, so we put the the short uh, lead on the on the black probe. And we're measuring 1.1 microfarads, very close. So, uh, okay, that's good. That's pretty close to what we wanted. That was one of the blue ones. Let's try one of the black ones in here. We should have a similar reading. Connect that to the positive, connect that to the negative. And that's even closer, isn't it? 1.07 microfarads, which is uh, pretty much exactly right. And let's just do one more. This is a uh, 100 microfarad uh, capacitor. It's polarized, so let's just get the leads on the right side. And the reading is coming in at 112 microfarads, which is about right. Um, so, uh, yeah, excellent. Okay, I'll take that. So up next will be... Actually, I'm not sure. I'll be back in a second. We'll figure it out. Just before we continue, I uh, I want to just put this in resistance mode, which it's in, and just measure this resistor. I'm pretty sure it was a 1K resistor. Oh, no, that's uh, 100 ohms, isn't it? I thought it was 1K. I'm glad I measured it. So it's a, it's a 100 ohm re resistor. I'll make sure that goes back in the correct drawer. So uh, let's just pop back over to our diagrams. We've finished with capacitance. Uh, I've lost my cursor here. That seems to happen to me quite a lot. And on we go. Ah, temperature. All right, cool. So um, uh, let me throw you over here. Now to do temperature readings, we need to attach our um, K-type thermocouple. That's what it's called. Uh, and this is it here. Uh, you can see it's been uh, zip tied diligently by me. So I'll just uh, cut that zip tie off. Now you can uh, use this long lead and feed it in the chassis and get it inside equipment. That's what that, that long lead is for. Um, so let's pop you over to the thermocouple. Now you can press range to change between... Um, oh no, maybe it's this one. Ah, yes it is. So um, you can change uh, between Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. Now... I'm Australian, so we deal in Celsius, so we might as well leave it there. Now it's picking up 27 
uh, degrees, that is probably a correct reading. It is. That is actually the temperature in the room is 27 degrees. Uh, if I hold it, technically it should go up to uh, 37 degrees, which is the um, human body temperature. But I've found in the past that it doesn't like to get right up there. Yeah, it sort of plateaus around three, around about 33 um, degrees Celsius. So um, who, who can account for that? I don't know. Um, and uh, I suppose if we uh, if we apply uh, some flame, we should be able to get the heat to go up. So let's hold it underneath the flame and see how hot we can get it. Wow, it got right up to 350 degrees, didn't it? Gee, wow. Yeah. I'm not sure if I've actually burnt it. I don't know. Anyway, I don't think I'll be doing that again in a hurry. No, I wasn't expecting it to get so hot so quickly. Um, it's cooling down, but it's still 50 degrees. Wow. I think I got some black soot on there as well, so I'm not real sure about that. <laughs> Anyway, that that's it for temperature. So uh, let's throw you back over to the uh, to the thing of me, and let's uh, continue here. Man, I seem to have all sorts of trouble losing my uh, cursor. There we go. Ah, frequency. Ah, very interesting. You know, what are we going to do about frequency? It's a good question. Um, let's throw you back over to the bench, and let's just uh, finish up with this. Uh, thermocouple. I'll just uh, you know, put him sort of back how we found him. I might uh, just uh, zip tie those uh, back together again. There we go. Now um, Oh shit! <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I, uh, I just cut that in exactly the wrong spot, and it came open again. Wow! All right, I don't know how I managed to get that wrong. Let's try again. So we're just zip tying up our thermocouple. I'm going to snip him off there. And that, that works. Okay, good. Now, um, I have never done a frequency reading with a uh, multimeter before in my life. Now, we've got an AC voltage over here of 9 volts and 50 hertz. So, uh, why don't we try that? Why don't we try that indeed? So, um, let's find our... Uh, what have we got? Shall we just use our, our probes? We probably could just use our probes. What do you reckon? Let's put that in there and that in there. And we're going to put the... Uh, <coughs> do, we, do we put it on voltage mode? How do we... Uh, Yes, okay, you do. You put it into voltage, so we've got it on voltage AC, and then we press Hertz, and it says over voltage. How could it possibly be over voltage? There's nothing connected. Strange. I don't understand. I don't understand. Anyway, okay. Well, I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna put the uh, the positive lead in here, and the negative lead. Oh, look at that! It's already picked it up. I didn't even need to. Uh, I didn't even need to connect the uh, the negative terminal. Uh, and connecting the negative terminal does affect the reading just a little bit. Let me just show you that. If I touch that on there, changes a bit. But yeah, it's basically uh, 50 hertz. Okay. And I wonder, the duty cycle? 50%. 
that's bang on. That's exactly what you'd expect. Uh, it's measuring 3 volts AC with no ground terminal connected. Yeah, okay. So, uh, fascinating. Picks up 3 volts without being uh, completed and it goes up to 10 volts which is what we'd expect. So put it back on and it's bang on 50 hertz. Fascinating. Very, very interesting. All right. So I guess uh, we might as well um, give it a go uh, on the signal generator as well. Why wouldn't we do that? So um, what we're gonna need is uh, a BNC cable, which we've got. So we've got this uh, BNC cable here to banana plugs. So let's plug that in to our meter. Now, let me see if I can show you. This, all right. So, uh, is that, oh, that needs to be inverted, I think. Uh, let me see if I can fix that up. Okay, we're back. So we're looking at the, um, the signal generator. This is my signal generator here. Throw that switch, that should power him on. Now he's got um, two outputs. So we've got, uh, we've got uh, channel one in the middle there and channel two. So we're gonna be using channel one. So let's uh, plug him in, channel one. And uh, Let's uh, let's pick some things, huh? So, um, uh, what are we dealing with? Let's go uh, mode. Uh, channel one on. All right. Uh, I'm not sure what the details are there. Let's pick frequency. No, nope, not free. Frequency. Uh, that's at, at 50 hertz, all right? So it should be outputting 50 hertz. Uh, let's change that. Let's change that to 60 hertz. Yep, all right. So, uh, so let's throw you over to the meter. And I might as well put the backlight on. Can you see better with the backlight on? So we're clocking in at 60 hertz. Uh, now I'm going to jump it up to 70 hertz and bang, it's gone up to 70 hertz. So uh, let's go up to 80, and let's just keep going up. 90, 100, 110, 120. I'm not sure when this guy's gonna max out. Up to 190, yep, that's no problem. Up to 280, yep. Let's go up 400, yep. 520. It's losing a little bit of precision there. 530. It's not exactly as precise as it was. Okay, it's gone into kilohertz range. Uh, so that's right, 630. So let's go up to uh, 1K, nearly there. There we go, that's one kilohertz. Yep, it's reading one kilohertz, no problem. So uh, let's go up. All right, I'm going to take it over. Uh, I'm going to take it down to exactly um, 1K. And then I'm just going to start going up by 1 kilohertz at a time. 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, 10K. All right, 20K, 30K, 40K. No problem. Oh, there we go. 60K, 70, 80. 90, 100K, all right, 200K, mm, 300, sort of. Yeah, it's falling right off now. So 400K, it's measuring 386, 500, 400. Yeah, so this is good up to about, what, a few hundred kilohertz, and then it starts wigging out a bit. That signal that I'm pumping in now is 600, 
uh, kilohertz and it's reading half of that. Uh, this by the way is 5 volts peak to peak. Uh, it's a sine wave as well I suppose I should say. And I suppose the duty cycle should be about uh, Oh look, it's gone red. It's 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 showing that it's out of spec. Yeah, there we go. So let's uh, put it back down to something it can deal with, like 100 kilohertz. Um, and why is it still red? I don't know why it's still red. I wasn't expecting that. And put it in hertz. Ah, so it says that uh, that 100 hertz is uh, uh, what what it, what overload. Interesting. Let's uh, let's take it down to uh, ten. I don't understand why that lights on at ten kilohertz. I don't get it. Do you get it? I don't get it. Uh, let's take him down even further. Let's go. Uh, to oh this what are we looking at here yeah one kilohertz what about 100 hertz I don't understand why that red light's on yeah the red light's on I don't get it Um, should it be on AC? This is not really, it's a, it's a DC sine wave, is that, I don't know if that's AC, if it's the same thing. It's interesting, that red light just stays on, I don't know why. Um, and there's no difference. Oh yeah, there is different. oh hang on. No, when it's in uh, AC mode and DC mode, it measures the same. Uh, frequency. So I don't really know how AC or DC bears on frequency. Don't get it. I don't know. Perhaps it doesn't even matter. Um, but the red light's on. I can't. I can't understand it. I don't know why it is. How low do we have to go to get rid of the the red light? This is on 10 hertz. 10 hertz is nothing. It's, it's not even the line. Is that that? that level so I don't know anyway I think that'll do us for uh, for, for, for frequency and and uh, of course duty cycle for a sine wave about 50% is about what you'd expect so um, but that's not the right one see if I can get you on the right one that's him there all right so um, we just did frequency and then we also did duty cycle. Of course, we're looking at a duty cycle of 50%. We haven't sent in uh, any irregular waves. It's all been 50-50 sine wave stuff. But I believe it. We know how duty cycle works. So that's, uh, that's 50%. That's fine. That's fine for our purposes. Now, okay, um, you can do relative readings. So uh, how are we going to do that? Uh, well, I suppose we could use two batteries. That would be pretty easy. Well, what about if I throw my power supply on? And uh, let's just bring him over here. All right, so I've got, uh, I've got a power supply here. I, I suppose I can show you if I throw you over to... I was expecting that to work. Yep, there it is. Okay. So I'm just uh, trying to show you the uh, the power supply down here. <coughs> That's uh, uh, set at uh, 1.5 volts. So um, let's just put it up to uh, uh, V set 3 volts. Enter. All right. So um, let's uh, 3 back over to the bench. We've got our power supply set at 3 volts. We don't have it plugged in uh, and turned on. Uh, we'll get our Fluke probes, <coughs> connect them. 
Now we're going to want to go. Isn't that fascinating? It's picking up. It's picking up. Uh, oh, there it goes. Wow, it's picking up some ace. Some some AC. Like, yeah, interesting. All right, so um, uh, we we want to do uh, DC voltage. And we want to um, we want to calibrate uh, on uh, three volts. So let's uh, let's hook up three volts. So that's ready to go. And if we throw the power on up to three volts, we go. And then we just press rel, okay? And that'll zero. And then um, let's take our uh, our our nine volt battery here. And let's get another reading. So let's send our probe in uh, there and touch the thing in there. Ah, wasn't expecting it to go op overload. I was expecting it to go uh, 6 volts. Interesting. I don't know why that's not working. It goes to minus 3 volts. We're on voltage DC. We've got the cables in the right way. You should be able to read a. Uh, you should be able to read a six volt voltage overload. I don't get it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's clear that. So if we press rel again, back to zero, and let's just read the voltage on the battery okay nine volts let's press rel and let's measure the the voltage again on uh, on the other one oh, I didn't press the rel button properly did I so you really need three hands when you're doing these jobs. <sighs> Man, look at this. It just won't come off. Why is it stuck on there? I think I'm not a fan of 9 volt power battery connectors. Anyway, let's uh, let's measure that. Should be nine volts, and then we'll press rel. Oh, I must have got the the. Have I got the things the wrong way around. All right, let's try again. Positive and negative. Okay, we're reading. Uh, that and we press rel and it goes to zero that's what we'd expect and then we'll just connect our uh, power and there we go so um, yep so we can either add three or uh, subtract three Did we? How did we get minus nine volts in there? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So if we uh, if we just connect it the other way around, we should get zero. Yeah, right. There you go. So, okay. Well, we could just do it with one battery. I didn't really think about that. But, yeah, of course you can. So, uh, you, you measure the thing in and then you can you can either add it back in so it cancels or you can add it together so that it adds up. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> what's the next thing to show you? That, that might nearly be everything. Uh, Let's throw you back over to the desktop and let's see what's next. Is there more? Oh man, I 
can't find my mouse. Ah, oh, yes, hold. So, um, that's a very easy one. Um, how are we going to do that? Let's throw you back over to the bench. And this is the final uh, demo for, for this meter. And this video has turned out to be really quite long, hasn't it? Um, we, we have covered uh, most of the... Um, the features of this multimeter though, so I'm pretty happy about that. Here is a potentiometer from earlier on. Uh, and uh, what we need is just some... Uh, these are uh, banana cables there and there. And we're just going to use them to connect to our potentiometer. We're going to put him into ohms mode. So he's in ohms mode there. Very good. And we're going to connect that and that. All right. So we're looking at uh, a resistor. It's, uh, it's all the way down the bottom. So we should be able to turn it up and it will increase the... Uh, oh, no, we, we, we've gone the other way. So we've turned it down to two point... Uh, and then we can turn it up to about 9k. That's about right. This is a 10k pot. So there we go. That's its maximum setting there. Now you can see that I can adjust this resistance and it goes down. And then if I want to hold it at that, then I just press hold and it doesn't matter. I can change it to my heart's content and the reading will stay held. That's all the hold button does is it holds the reading. You press it again and it stops and then you can hold it again uh, and then we can change it and change it and we press hold again and hold again and that's and that's everything there is to know about hold. And I believe uh, that, that 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 concludes uh, our thing, if I if I click on this, I think there's no more to be done. Yep, it's taking me back to the home page. Uh, and on the home page, by the way, we can review everything that we did. So we did the fuse test. Uh, we tested both fuses, the high current and the low current fuse. Um, we tested the voltage in AC and DC. And we also did some millivolt testing on DC, I believe. We did current testing, but I'm not huge into current testing and we chickened out a bit because I didn't want to accidentally blow my fuses. Um, continuity, uh, no problem. It beeps when it's continuous. It doesn't beep otherwise. Um, we did our diode testing, forward bias. It gave us a reading. Ours was uh, 0.55 volts. Um, reverse bias shows overload or open line, depending on how you want to interpret that. Um, it also tells you what to expect if your diode isn't working. It could appear as a short, short or it could appear as open, um, uh, depending on how you've got it biased. Uh, then resistance, that was no problem. We did our resistance meeting. Capacitance was very good. It did uh, 10 puff, no problem. All the way up to 100 microfarads we gave it. So that was good. Uh, temperature was good. It was uh, The room temperature was bang on. The body temperature was a bit weird because it didn't go above 32 or 33 degrees Celsius, whereas the human body is usually about 37 degrees. But when we uh, put the lighter under it, it blew up to like 350 degrees Celsius, like pretty much instantaneously. So there you go. Now, uh, frequency, everything we did uh, with that was good, uh, except there was the question of why the, uh, the, the, uh, the danger light was on. I didn't understand that. Um, but uh, it picked the power line frequency exactly right, and it handled pretty much everything that the... Um, signal generator could throw at it up until around 300 or 400 kilohertz and it started to wig out a bit. So it's good for a few hundred kilohertz it seems. Um, and of course the duty cycle, we only tested it on a, on a regular sine wave and the duty cycle came out at 50%, which is exactly what we'd expect to see. So that was good. Uh, the relative readings, we did we did it with a nine volt battery. We, uh, we, we, we zeroed it at nine volts and then we put the voltage back in to turn it to zero volts or we added the voltage to get it up to 18 volts. So that's what we expected to see as well. And then I showed you the hold function with the... Um, with where you could just press the whole button in order to, um, to, to to lock in the current reading that you're looking at so it doesn't change when you disconnect the circuit. So that's everything. I'm going to throw you over to the uh, farewell cam and we're going to wrap up. Well, congratulations on making it to the end of the video. So um, that concludes our demo of the Fluke 17B Plus digital multimeter. Um, I was pretty happy with the bit of kit. 
there was a few things that I didn't completely understand. Um, I wasn't really super happy with the current uh, situation. I didn't do a really good job uh, demoing that. Uh, of course, uh, I was led astray by the diagram and that, that got a bit confusing there for a bit, but we did figure it out in the end. Um, I used the frequency and duty cycle measurements on a scope uh, on a meter for the first time. Um, we had that weird aberration uh, measuring the DC voltage where it would go uh, overload and measure 22 volts and we checked it with the, um, the, the oscilloscope and couldn't find that aberration. So that seems to be something internal to the meter and not actually what's happening on the on the um, signal or the voltage so I I didn't completely understand that um, but uh, it was a really good uh, to time together that we had today I was very pleased to, to do this because uh, it gave me the opportunity to make sure I completely understand all of the features and functions of, of the uh, of the scope I did duck into the manual and the data sheet a couple of times during the course of this video just to check things out so I did learn a little bit as a result of that Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and please remember to hit like and subscribe. Just one last thing, I, uh, I wanted to tell you, um, I was reading the manual, and apparently um, when you're doing a frequency or duty cycle me measurement, um, it says, the hazardous voltage alert LED turns on at frequency or duty cycle test when the product is in the voltage functions, uh, volts AC, DC, and millivolts. So um, that explains that. So it, uh, it wasn't actually an overload or anything. It was just uh, letting us know that we were in uh, frequency mode on the, on the voltage setting. Anyway, that, that, that was just a little uh, addendum to our video. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.